so we are still in Revelation 17. I think it will be good for us to just pick up where we left off and summarize and identify the seven kings. Mm -hmm. So we'll summarize what we've learned about these seven kings, the is and is not and yet is, and then we'll look at where the was and is not and then is, and then we'll look at the identification, finish this up, and then we're going to move right into 18. Remember now, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, all about the judgments, the plagues, mm -hmm. the wrath of God, but explaining in more detail why, 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 why. And when we started Revelation 17, we looked at one of the reasons why, the blood of martyrs, the blood of saints, the, the cup of fornication with the kings of the earth and the abominations, the, the, the terrible things that this system has been involved in is the reason why. Mm -hmm. And God just says, we're done with that. That's got to go. There's a consequence to this evil, and right. I'm going to allow that consequence to come and finish Mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing, the big picture is of what we're seeing here in relation to God. And God's character is on the line. Is it okay for Him to deal with evil and take it out? Are we okay with that? You know, God's love, God's mercy is just as part of that love and mercy. And I think what the Bible is telling us is yes. The angels of heaven are saying yes. And He wants us to say yes also. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's pray together. Yvonne, would you pray for us? Sure. Father God, what a privilege it is to study Your Word and to learn about the plan of salvation through the book of Revelation. And we're just so grateful that you've given us this. So we, we pray that your spirit will just enlighten us and illuminate this information for us and help us to not only be hearers, but doers of the word mm -hmm. as well. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I, I think in a sense, Daniel too helps us with this. This in Revelation 17 is a summary really of history of powers that have accumulated and given their, they've, they've lost their military might, but they've given their, their, their culture, they passed their culture on. Mm. When, when Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 talk about Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, all these ancient, ancient powers, kingdoms, it talks about how their military might was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Mm -hmm. And so in Daniel chapter 2, when the stone which represents Christ hits the image at the feet, it brings down the entire image, right. which includes Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, and that's the second coming of Jesus. And I think that's what we're talking about here. That picture will help us with identifying these seven kings. Mm. Right. I think that picture will help us. Yep. So um, let's let's go back to Revelation 17, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to pick it right up in verse verse eight. Um, Revelation 17, verse 8. So, Jason, would you, would you go ahead and read verse 8 uh, again, please? Sure. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder uh, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Okay, so from our last program, we saw that this beast is the same as the one found in Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the Bible talks about Revelation 13 verse 3, that uh, one of his heads were wounded to death and the deadly wound was healed. We recognize that as the papal power. 1798, it receives a deadly wound. It still existed, mm -hmm. although it did not have authority to persecute as it did in the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. So it was, is, but shall what? Is not. Or oh, I'm sorry, is not, that's right, is not and yet. Shall be. And yet is. Yeah, In it, other it words, is, it, is. it is and yet. <laughs> so you talked about and brain twisting, right? <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is and yet is, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So this is the, the beast in its wounded state. Right. And then it shall ascend. Mm -hmm. it, it's, its wound will be healed. Will be healed. Mm -hmm. And it's healed when we have this threefold union of dragon, beast, false prophet. Mm -hmm. So when we see in Revelation 17, 8, uh, that it was, uh, is not, and is to, or shall ascend, we know we're talking about the same power. We also know that because right when this happens, it says all the world, you know, those who were not written in the Lamb's book of life yeah. wondered. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we go to Revelation 13, verse 3, and right after the deadly wound is healed. Everyone's wondering. Actually in verse 4, what does it say? Right after the wound is healed, they worship the who? The, the dragon. dragon. Mm -hmm. mm. Who are they worshiping? The dragon. The dragon. Mm -hmm. The dragon. 
hey, the dragon. They worship the dragon. Remember mm -hmm. in Revelation 12, verse uh, 11 and, uh, or verse 12 or 13 around there, mm -hmm. we talked about how the dragon has come down unto you mm -hmm. knowing he has but a short time. Short time. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing these events line up. God is showing us in mo like from Revelation 12 onward, he's showing us, hey, I just want you to know, by the way, the dragon's going to appear. Mm -hmm. He's coming. When this happens, the whole world's going to wonder. When this happens, he has but a what time? Short. A short time. Another thing there, too, I think it's really important because what we're doing is we're identifying the seventh, the seventh king right. as a threefold union. So I was bringing out in Revelation 13 that when they worship the beast, they're worshiping the dragon. And also the second beast that comes out of the earth makes an image to the first beast and commands that the whole world should worship the first beast. Yes. Right. The image of the first beast is the worship of the first beast. But it's done through this land beast. So you have the land beast, yes. America, United States, you have the papacy, the sea beast, and yes. then you have the dragon together as a threefold union together. in Revelation 13. Absolutely. Revelation 17 is just summarizing that. Yes. So the seventh head that ascends out is going to be ascending out because it has the support of the dragon and has the support of the land beast. That's it's right. all, it's one power in that seventh That's head. That's right. I remember how we, we talked about you know, how the beast was and is, uh, was, is no. not, yet is, mm -hmm. and is to come. The Jesus, that, that phrase, was, is, and is to come, mm -hmm. is directly related to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So what we see here is the fact that this beast is actually counterfeiting yes. the movement of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Who was, and is, and is to come. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've did, you know, looked at those things to identify. Now we one get more, to verse, one more thing. go ahead. One yes. more thing. Yep. So, just to give our viewers a little bit more biblical um, evidence for this, mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and this verse just came to me. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter two, same thing. You have the man of sin, right? Mm -hmm. What is he trying to do? Well, in Second Thessalonians chapter two, it says here that in verse four, he opposes and exalts himself above yes. all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he as God yes. sits mm -hmm. in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's really important for us to recognize this. This is a counterfeit of God. It's a counterfeit of Christ. Yeah. Hey, would you, what does the verse right before it say? Oh. The verse right before it says, yes. let no man deceive you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, By any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay. So that word, we talked about it before, that word so. revealed, apocalypto, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it means the apocalypse, mm -hmm. which is the very name of the book of Revelation, yes. which points to the coming or the revelation of Jesus Christ, his second yes. coming. Yes. So what is... Uh, what is his power going to do? It's going to seek to impersonate mm -hmm. the second coming of Christ. This is the thing that causes the whole world to wonder mm -hmm. right after the beast. In fact, um, Jesus said it this way. When you see the abomination of desolation mm -hmm. standing in the holy place, mm -hmm. right, then know that it's time for you to run. Yes. Mm -hmm. He ends that, that, uh, that whole discourse about when you see the abomination of desolation, which we understand to be the very same thing, the healing of the deadly wound. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing being explained in various ways. Mm -hmm. The seventh king that is to come, mm -hmm. the healing of the deadly wound, mm -hmm. the abomination of desolation, the man of sin sitting mm -hmm. in the temple of God showing, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. But in Matthew 24, he ends it by saying this, when you see the leaves of the fig tree growing. Mm -hmm. No, he says, no, the, understand the parable of the fig tree. When you see the leaves of the fig tree coming to life, no, mm -hmm. you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, mm -hmm. um, he says, you will know that the end of all things is, mm -hmm. is near when you, the generation that sees this generation will not pass. Mm -hmm. right. Well, what, what, you know, what happens to a, a tree in the winter? It dies. It dies. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, it goes yeah. dormant. So, yeah, it goes dormant, right? It, mm -hmm. It, it dies, but it's not Still really alive. dead. Yes. Mm. Right. right. Come on now. Right. So when the leaves begin to come forward, you see, oh, mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's coming back to life. It like it was mm -hmm. dead, it's right? coming back to life. He said, the, ge the generation that sees this, mm -hmm. that generation is not going to pass. Mm -hmm. A couple wow. more points here, Ivor, while we're here. This is really yeah. incredible. Oh, the son of perdition, remember. Yes. Goes into perdition, goes into perdition, goes into perdition. Now check this verse out. You've forgotten about this one, but this is good. 
um, it says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan mm -hmm. with all power and signs and lying wonders. Yes. Mm. Okay, so you've got the man of sin here and yes. you've got Satan here. Yes. Okay, yes. with lying signs and, and with signs and lying wonders. And then yes. I want to just read this because this is what we talked about earlier. He comes with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. And so God is going to do what? Send song delusion that they would believe a lie because they, that they might be damned that believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's right. Mm. That's right. So it's not, it's not that God is, is deceiving us. Deceive, we are deceived because we refuse to love the truth. We re refuse to take a hold of righteousness. Yes. And therefore, this strong delusion takes us. Yeah. Mm. It's one or the other. That's right. We, we have to make a choice for the yeah. truth. If not, we're going to be deceived. The, the strong delusion is the wondering time. Let's mm -hmm. call it that, the wondering time, when mm -hmm. the whole world wonders. wonders. It's the strong delusion, mm -hmm. the wondering time, the short space, mm -hmm. the short time. Mm -hmm. God, the way that, you know, in math, we talked about this before, in math, you can check your problem. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. reverse it, you check. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing for us in the scripture. He's giving us these mm -hmm. different symbols, but talking about the very same, same event. Yep. And he's saying, if you get this right, you'll see that all of this lines up, mm -hmm. right? So let's go back to Revelation 17 and we'll look at now verse, uh, verse uh, eight, I'm sorry, verse nine and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Would you read that, Yvonne? Mm -hmm. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Okay, so here you have, you know, this, okay, so now he's saying, hey, five are fallen. Remember we talked about that's the was, mm -hmm. one is, mm -hmm. and the other is not yet come. So the one that's not yet come is number seven. Mm -hmm. Five, one is, mm -hmm. six, and seven is the one that is yet to come, mm -hmm. right? We're waiting for the seventh mm -hmm. uh, king to come. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we're in the time of the sixth king, mm -hmm. right? And five have fallen. Mm -hmm. So what does this all mean? Who are the five, mm -hmm. the six, and the seven? Well, what James mentioned earlier about the book of Daniel helping mm -hmm. us is that in the prophecy of Daniel, we're very specifically told that uh, these four um, beasts that mm -hmm. Daniel sees, the angel says, these four beasts are four King. kings. Daniel okay. 7, 17. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so 23. that's Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, mm -hmm. Rome. Okay. So man, we got four of the seven down. <laughs> we know the, these are four kings. And we know that they apply to Revelation 17 because the image in Daniel 2 is still standing Aww. when the stone hits it at the second yes. coming of Jesus. So we know these kingdoms are still part of the picture, part of the puzzle, right? Here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you got four kings mm -hmm. down, right? So who is the king that comes after Rome? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we, we know that because we've been studying that all along. What power rose out of Rome? It is um, papal Rome, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the uh, yeah, the little horn. Mm -hmm. But we're actually told that the little horn is a king. Yes. So let, let go, go over to Daniel chapter eight. Just hold your place here. We'll look at Daniel eight. Um, let's read, I believe it is verse 23. Daniel eight, verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, yes. a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Okay. Verse 24, and his yep. power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here's what we begin to do now. When you read this stuff, you should, you should be like, ah, oh, this is the woman of Revelation 17. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The more connecting points you have, mm -hmm. the, the easier it becomes to understand. Oh, this is the little horn of mm -hmm. Daniel 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the first beast of Revelation 13. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the woman of Revelation 7. You're, you're having more points of understanding. Yep. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You're seeing yep. it from these different angles. Mm -hmm. yep. Verse 25, he magnifies himself in his heart. Absolutely. We read in 2 Thessalonians. Right. He stands up against the prince of princes, counterfeits, Christ, yes. mediator, priest. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. all there. Yep. So now you, you, okay, so now we've got Point five. is he's called a king. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Point is he's called a king. So now we've got five kings and we know what happens to this fifth king. Mm -hmm. He receives a deadly wound. wound. From right? Atheism. From atheism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've got five kings that have fallen, mm -hmm. right? Or that were. Mm -hmm. We know 
who's to come. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in the time of the sixth king. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We're in the time of the sixth king now. Who, the question is, who's the sixth king? And there's some you know, debate among this, but I think there's a reasonable space mm-hmm. to conclude that you know, mm-hmm. it can be one of any one of these two but things. But we know it's the time of atheism. We know it's the That's time of atheism, mm-hmm. right? So to, to make it plain, to make it very simple, mm-hmm. when the French Revolution occurred, mm-hmm. which we're gonna tell our readers this, I mean, our, mm-hmm. our readers, <laughs> our viewers this, yeah. but, um, um, we're asking you to just, you know, kind of go with us on this because we're going to cover it in the book of Daniel yes. in more detail by the grace uh. of God. Okay. But in Daniel chapter 11, which is the calculus chapter mm. of Daniel. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> that's the, class, yeah, like yeah. Calculus. that's <laughs> the, yeah, that's the, what is it talking about? Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Daniel 11 is revelation chapter 17. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. But in Daniel 11, um, Atheism mm-hmm. is described by a title, King of the South. Mm. Okay, it's, it's called the King of the South mm-hmm. or the King of Egypt. Mm-hmm. We know that in Revelation 11, Egypt is described as the power out of which this, I mean, is the place out of which this power, power right, atheistic power, right, which yeah. was France. Right. Symbolically, France. And Exodus mm-hmm. 5 2 also says, you know, who is God that I should, you know, exactly. let his people go? It's an atheistic principle, an atheistic power. And it is that atheistic power that brought about the deadly wound, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. of the papacy. Mm-hmm. So the reason that the papacy is not mm-hmm. is because this king of the south mm-hmm. took it down. So that's the sixth mm-hmm. king. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Mm-hmm. The sixth king. So involves a time where yes. the woman is not. Right. She is. She's alive. She is. But she's not reigning. That's right. Mm-hmm. She's not and connected. she's not reigning because atheism it's has like, taken her down. Right. Okay. But okay. she will be. She will but ascend out of that pit. She's going right. to ascend. Atheism rolls out of that bottomless mm-hmm. pit. Atheism, wi- I'm mean, sorry, uh, the, the woman mm-hmm. will come back. Yes. Right? But she's coming back with even more. Mm-hmm. Threefold power. If she had power, I mean, think about the power, the persecution she was able to do during the Dark Ages. She's coming back with three full power. And the horns, mm. the ten horns fully supporting her. Exactly. Mm. So the world wonders. This is the seventh king that comes up. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 7. In so fact, now, she yeah, has so ahead. much power that she's going to make war with the Lamb. That's right. We're going to get to that in a minute. That's right. That's how much power she has. That's right. Revelation 17. And, so we got uh, six kings. Six kings. And now verse, uh, verse 10. Let me read it again. So mm-hmm. there are seven kings. Mm-hmm. Five are fallen. Who are the five? Um, Babylon, mm-hmm. Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Okay. And the fifth? And the fifth one was... Who comes after Rome? Who comes after pagan oh, Rome? Oh, papal Rome. Papal five. Rome. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the sixth... Right. What is that? At least the time period we know is where... Yep. Atheism. Atheism, as the king of the south, mm-hmm. has taken down mm-hmm. the papacy. Right. Right. So the papacy is, mm-hmm. but it is not. Mm-hmm. It's wounded. Mm-hmm. It, it still exists, mm-hmm. but not in the state of power that it had. Right. Well, we know the deadly wound is going to be what? Healed. Healed, and he will come again. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, he will come uh, he will come again. Mm. Uh-huh. Isn't that what Jesus does? Uh-huh. Jesus comes again, right? Uh-huh. He will ascend and come again, counterfeiting Showing the second coming. He is God. In yeah. fact, it is a second coming. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Because, because he came once dead. before. Mm-hmm. He's coming again. Yep. But this time with more power, mm-hmm. more authority, mm-hmm. because he's coming with the... Dra- he's, he's coming dragon, beast, false prophet. Mm-hmm. Threefold power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, now... Notice the end of verse 11. The beast that was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, verse, we just read verse 10. When he cometh, end of verse 10, when he cometh, he must continue a what? Short space. A short space. That's going to be that time mm-hmm. of trouble, that, uh, that uh, short time mm-hmm. that the dragon knows that he has. Okay? Kind of like That's gonna be, we got left. Yeah. Fig leaves, <laughs> the fig leaves, okay? So now we get over verse, uh, seven, verse 11, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, eighth and is of the seventh mm-hmm. and goeth into perdition. Okay, now what does this mean? Mm-hmm. Eighth. There is no eighth. How There's, only there? There's, only There's only seven. There's only seven. seven. Oh, but yeah. the He's eighth. The yeah. Huh? Yeah. It, so It's explained here because it says there he's the eighth and is one of the seven or comes out of the seven. 
This is a unique power. Yeah. That's why he's identified as an eight. Yes. But he's really one of the seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question, yeah. The question is, how does he, how is he the eighth? Mm -hmm. Well, it says he goes into perdition. So what does that mean, goes into perdition? Destruction. Yeah. So what happens when Jesus comes again? Mm -hmm. We're told that Satan is actually cast That's into it. where? Lake of fire. Into a, not a lake of oh, fire pit. yet, into a bottomless pit, pit yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so they go down. They eat mm -hmm. th that whole power, the beast, the, everyone dies, mm -hmm. right? But there's some, is that the end of them? No. Is that the end of King Seven? No. Mm -mm. No, because King Seven is coming back, isn't mm -hmm. it? When does King Seven come back on the scene? After the thousand years. At the end of the 1,000 years, what happens to Satan? Mm, he is loosed from his prison. Right. Mm. The beast and the false prophet mm -hmm. come back to life mm -hmm. because that now represents the whole world, mm -hmm. right? All, who, all the wicked, mm -hmm. where are the righteous? In heaven. heaven. They're in heaven, heaven. right? Six. They're in Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Mm. What happens at the end of the thousand years? Mount Zion, which is on the sides of the North, North. North is coming down. Comes down. Yep. Satan uh, is let out of his, and he is the, he is the, the dragon, beast, false prophet reunite at mm -hmm. the end of the one thousand years mm -hmm. to uh, to launch their final assault mm -hmm. on the sides of the North. Mm -hmm. mm. So he, it's not an eighth king. Mm. It's the same seventh king, mm -hmm. but he rises up once more. Yeah. Mm. For that final assault. Good. Mm -hmm. there, here we go. He's one this of the seven. The, but it's, it's another assault, so it's the eighth. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. The yeah, seven take yeah. place before the thousand years. The That's eighth right. takes place after. After the thousand years. But it's the same. <clears throat> it's the same power. Right. And what did he try to do in heaven? He wanted to sit. In the sides of the north. Sides of the north. Mm -hmm. What does he try to do on earth? Mm -hmm. He wanted to sit on the sides of the north. At the end of the millennium, what's he trying to do? Mm -hmm. He's trying to sit. He's trying one last time mm -hmm. to, to take the, the sides of the north. Mm hmm. hmm. Mm -mm. Wow. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Short time. Yes. God does not allow this to go very, very long. Yes. It's a short time because mm -hmm. it's overwhelming, but it brings everyone to a point of decision. Mm -hmm. And then it says, these have one mind. Verse 13, they give their power and strength unto the beast. Now notice this. Read verse 14 for us, Jason. All right. It's 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Can you imagine that? Mm. Can you imagine the audacity? He's going to make war with the Lamb. He's mm. making war with God. He is making war with the King of the universe, but the Lamb will overcome them. Yes. The Lamb will overcome them. Mm -hmm. How does a lamb overcome these kinds of powers? See, here, right here, we're talking about the lamb as in the cross. We're talking about the lamb as in Calvary. We're talking about the principles of unselfish love, of other centered love, overcoming these powers. And that's the only way we can overcome. Focus has to be on those principles. Mm -hmm. Love yeah. believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Even prophecy will fail, but love will never yeah. fail. Mm -hmm. So when, when I was in the world, I was a martial artist. Mm -hmm. I used Ditto. to do all kinds of fighting styles, right? And what's interesting is that in the martial arts, fighting styles are usually named after animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, dragon style. Yep. Mo many, many of us fight dragon style, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be fighting dragon style, but we fight dragon style. Mm -hmm. We follow the pattern of the dragon. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about it, oh, this final conflict, mm -hmm. it's dragon style mm -hmm. versus, versus lamb, lamb style. style. Mm. And you're like, wait a minute, can a, you know, can a lamb beat a dragon? Master, can lamb beat a dragon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lamb will beat the dragon. Mm -hmm. We need to learn mm -hmm. lamb style. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Lamb style. Good. And he said unto me, the waters which you saw where the horse sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. With a verse we refer to many times, and it's just a clarification for us. This is talking about people. It's not talking... The symbols here need to be broken down. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these will hate the whore, will make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Okay. So you have these powers of the earth giving their support, but then drying up. That's what we read in Revelation 16. 16. Yep. 
they support, the waters support Babylon, but then they dry up. Mm -hmm. They dry up when they realize they've been deceived. They yeah. dry up when they realize, whoa, we have been completely taken into this deception. And this woman, this system has led us to perdition. And they get angry. They, get, they manifest the natural yes. consequences of, their, of, the, of the deception they've received. Mm -hmm. So God is pulling it all out here. He's telling us this is, he says God has put us in their hearts. It means God, we make decisions and choices against God, but God can still use us to fulfill his will. Mm. Pharaoh was still used of God, even though he totally rejected God, he was still used of God to, do, to, to fulfill God's will mm -hmm. and as, a, as an instrument where God could manifest his glory and deliver his people out of Egypt. And then it says, and I'm just, I'm moving through this because we've got two minutes left. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the woman is that great city. That was split up. It was divided into three, three parts. parts. Mm. Dragon, beast, false prophet. So basically, Revelation chapter 17 is an explanation of why God is bringing these plagues, why God is bringing these judgments. And the explanation takes us all the way back to Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome. What it's telling us is that God has been long suffering toward the human race, mm. and we haven't changed. Yeah. We're still selfish, we're still self seeking, we're still self exalting, we're still magnifying ourselves. That's why we support the dragon and the beast. We say Satan wants to sit in the sides of the north, we do. We say Satan's the one that wants to take God's place, but Adam and Eve were tempted and you'll be like God's. Mm -hmm. And so we bit into it. We've, we, that has been instilled in us from the fall and God wants to remove it. Because to be like God is not to be self-seeking and self-exalting. To be yeah. like God is to be selfless, mm -hmm. other-centered. Yes. And so God is seeking to restore us to that original yeah. image. Mm -hmm. Daniel 2, you know, in Daniel 2, when the stone is cut out without hands and smites the image mm -hmm. on the feet, we're not told why. Mm. We're just like, that's strange. Everything from Daniel 2 onward, the prophetic chapters, is answering that question. Mm -hmm. why? This is why the stone. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, oh, oh, a little horn. Yeah. Daniel 8, oh, he does what? Yes. Daniel 11, and you go yes. on Revelation, the a whole book of Revelation is just so, yeah. hey, let me show you why that stone mm -hmm. comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these chapters on judgment, we think, why? Why so many chapters on judgment? Is God really mad? No. Every one of them unfolds a different perspective of why it is these judgments are coming. Yes. Gives us, gives us another insight to the reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know people are going to have questions. This is a tough chapter. And that's exactly why they should send it to SSS at 3ABN.org. Amen. So send your questions in. We look forward to our next program together. Revelation 18 next.